uh, you and I uh, had the chance to uh, talk to both uh, Cristiano and Akash and kind of get get up up front close and personal uh, with the whole thing. It was a it was a rough uh, result uh, for Qualcomm uh, in the marketplace. I'll be honest, I was a little bit a little bit surprised. I'm not normally surprised. You know, I can look at how they did, uh, what they said, what their forecast was. Uh, they beat on EPS by by almost uh, three and a half points. They they missed uh, slightly uh, on on revenue, but but quite frankly, um, this was really all about uncertainty in smartphones uh, overall and Android. But I would say specifically in in China, because you know the results and the even the guide was in line. With uh, with expectations, uh, they've had companies that had great execution, right? You're not seeing any major hiccups like you've seen with other uh, other chip makers. <clears throat> there really were no surprises about what was said uh, with China uh, and and even even Android. Probably the one thing that was thrown thrown out there that, by the way, was a rumor again two weeks ago was was Huawei getting back into. Uh, the market that could give uh, some competition to to Qualcomm, but Qualcomm basically said, "Hey, it's it's not meaningful revenue today, uh, and it's going to we're zeroed out." And then for Apple, they zeroed out uh, the forecast into 2024 and 2025. So again, it's 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 kind of an, an oddity. One thing I I again um, I always want to look at puts and takes on. I don't want to sugarcoat anything, but I have to give the company credit. Uh, where credit is due on the AI side, I don't uh, necessarily think that the company knew what to say uh, about AI, and I, I completely understand that. You know, quite frankly, when you're trying to balance uh, China, you're trying to balance Android, uh, and overall, you want to you don't want to be too bullish about it, particularly when it's not a uh, burden hand, right? Meaning, you know, it's more of a 2024 thing and 2025 thing. But I did like. I did like their their expression of it, which was essentially so. First of all, AI is going to permeate everything. If we do the double click on smartphones and PCs, uh, first of all, PCs is a brand new uh, market for them. They have you know zero point one percent market share in. But more importantly, in smartphones, the potential to charge more, the potential to have a TAM expansion again hard hard to lean into that when the entire market is down uh now um so and the other one is uh share shift so you know they floated all three at least as the hypothesis of of what it uh of what it could be i'm looking forward to what the company has to say about its next generation uh products uh i think it's in uh, october you and i are going to fly uh, roughing it uh, out there in uh, uh, Maui to hear the latest and greatest technologies that uh, that they're going to bring out. Yeah, so I think that one was mine, but you did such a good job. I'm gonna, I just let you run with it. Um, oh my gosh! No, buddy. I listen, am so sorry. Listen, this is a this is about dynamicism. Is that a word? Dynamicism. I think a dynamism. Dyna, dynamism. The bism, that's all right. And uh, you got to do the next one too, because I was, I, I, I just, I want to see you keep rolling. Okay, so here's the thing, Pat. Markets hate opaqueness. The biggest problem with Qualcomm was not its result. Its result was very much in line with the way it had set the expectation, and their execution was good. The margins looked okay. The e, the beat on EPS was good. The revenue was a thin range. Uh, the guide kind of fell within range, but it was the commentary. That's my personal opinion was it was more about the commentary. It was more about yeah. like, we're not sure what's going to happen with China. Well, people get nervous when you say you're not sure. Um, you know, I think seeing the disparity between Android and Apple, which isn't really all Qualcomm's fault, by the way, yeah. that's more to do with the Samsungs and the other OEMs and their ability to market a compelling product. Um, so that was a bit of a problem. The AI story is a bit of a problem because Qualcomm is, does an amazing job with AI, and they've been doing an amazing job with AI, and they've had some of the most, uh, you know, some of the most capable MPUs, uh, GPUs in their phones, uh, whether it's for gaming, whether it's for sensors, images, um, you know, they're doing really cool things with uh, LLMs, uh, you know, on the devices, uh, using stable diffusion, but 
just like 5G, there's been a little bit of a gap of where does that create money for Paramount? Yeah. Where are they going to charge more? Is the Are the OEMs going to pay more for this content that they're putting in the devices? Are, are end customers going to buy apps that are ultimately going to drive premiums for the phones? So are we going to see a refresh cycle ex uh, accelerate? Because people are going to want to buy more of these new phones because the new phones are going to have AI capabilities that the old phones don't have. And not being able to share that, I think, creates a little bit of consternation within the analyst or, you know, community, which then trickles out in their commentary to investors. The real positive thing, though, Pat, is, is Qualcomm is all over AI. Yeah. They are all over AI, but there's some time to be, uh, some time between now and when that becomes clear in terms of the, the where the revenue opportunities lie. Their automotive business should be exciting people. I mean, they've absolutely crushed it quarter after quarter, and you're seeing momentum. Every quarter you're talking, you know, 100 million more, 100 million more, and a bunch more design wins. And that's going to suddenly take the company into a new space because all these OEMs that are working with Qualcomm have massive ne needs to electrify and to uh, add AI and autonomy to their vehicles. Qualcomm's been the winner here. You know, you can look at NVIDIA and NVIDIA's early lead there, and they've seeded the early lead. Now, obviously, they've found other revenue streams and their earnings are probably going to look pretty great. But in, in automotive, Qualcomm has actually done a tremendously good job. They were tremendously large in their revenue. I, I wanted to practice doing a former president thing there. Um, but the the... Bottom line, Pat, is it's the lack of clarity. What's up with Apple? What's up with Huawei? What's up with China? There just was too much uncertainty in the numbers. And people, that was what you saw the response to. The execution wasn't the problem. It's the guide. And the guide and the lack of knowing what's going to happen is never a good thing in the investor community. But you know what? You got to give appreciation for them being honest, being open, because it's kind of sometimes better when you're a public company like that to get it on the table. And then you know what? Maybe the things will maybe things will get better, and then they'll beat it handedly, and people will yeah. be happy. But if they overestimate or they sound overly confident, and then miss, they'll get punished even worse in the future. So it was a tough needle to thread. I thought they did a pretty good job of it, um, but don't mistake that kind of reaction for a technological problem. It's not a technological problem. It's just the 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 clarity is not there right now, and hopefully it'll come uh, come through this quarter. Yeah, I think as the midterm growth uh gets more confident i think it's all going to pull together and people are going to fully understand what the company brings to the table 